Here's a list of things that you definitely shouldn't do. They're actually okay, sometimes. Not checking your bike before a ride. Yes, I've probably done videos where I've said, you've got to check it every time. In reality, I don't check every single thing before every single ride. Who does? But I'm sort of taking note of things when I am riding. Maybe I do a bit of a heavy landing or something feels a bit loose, then I will stop and I'll have a look. Or I'll think, right, that's what I need to check when I go home. But something that I do every time is make sure that my wheels are tight. Quick check on the axles and give my tyres a quick pressure gauge check using my hand, then I'm off. Ride in without gloves. I do think gloves are an important part of mountain bike protection, so good helmet, some gloves, good shoes, maybe some knee pads. But actually there's a lot of people that uh, prefer riding without, they just like the feel of it. And if I'm out for a mellow ride or a cross country ride, I do sometimes ride without gloves. But if I'm in the Highlands of Scotland, riding some really rocky, gnarly trails, then I'll always use them because it's the first thing that hits the ground normally if you fall off, you'll put your hand down and it's just not nice. I've done it before, cut the palm of your hand, you can't ride for much longer after that. So I'll definitely ride gloves in the gnarlier terrain. Ride in without spares. Actually, I do this all the time. Normally I ride without anything. Uh, yes, me, who always tells you to go and take spares with you on every ride. There is a risk, especially if I puncture, people laugh at me and say, oh, you're that guy, you always tell me to do this, right? Um, but it's because normally I ride trails where I'm never that far away from the van, so I could snap a chain, I could get a puncture, but I'll only do it if I know I can get back to the van within sort of half an hour. Again, we're in Fort William. Uh, I've actually got a few bits and bobs in here. I've got uh, a multi-tool that has pretty much everything on there, including the chain tool. I've got a pump, I've got some plugs, I've got a tube because if I punctured up here, it's probably a good hour and a half walk to the bottom, so I don't want to do that. But normally, actually on my sort of average everyday ride, I won't carry anything. Shredding corners. Now, corners are made to be shredded, in my opinion, but you need to do it carefully and shred wisely. Uh, because I think if you go to a perfect sandy berm that someone's just spent a week building, and you go and ruin it, that's not cool. Uh, so, just be respectful of trails. Don't just go skidding around in uh, corners and ruining them. But I think if you're in a bike park, I think most corners are fair game. But what I will say is be a responsible corner shredder. Don't be a sh corner shredder offender. So if you are someone who always shreds turns, then get involved with a local dig day and pay your dues. Backpedaling, it's never great because you can get your chain to come off or it can get jammed. There's even a risk sometimes of getting it jammed and breaking your rear mech, so backpedal is not that good. However, sometimes I do it, especially between corners where I'm dropping one outside foot and then going to the other. So I ride left foot forward, and that really happens on corners like this. So I've got a right and then a left. And it's better, in my opinion, to do half a backpedal to get my foot down than spinning it forward, because actually I haven't got a chance here to spin a full revolution and get my foot in the right spot. I'll probably get my timing wrong and there's a good chance for getting my weight wrong and messing up that second corner, if not crashing. So what I will do on the way in, I'll make sure I'm in the right gear so I'm not, you know, my mech's not going to try and drag the chain off the cassette or off the chain ring. And then I'll do half a back pedal to get between my outside foot that way and then the other. Landing jumps front wheel first. Now, normally in a jump skills video, I talk about trying to match the angle of the landing with your bike. So actually your front wheel does land first because it's just getting there before the back wheel. But this is a good situation where you kind of want to get both wheels down to the ground pretty quickly. So I will nose it in and now I'll be on the brakes hard because it's a really loose tight corner just after the landing. Running dust caps on your valves. I actually never run them on these tubeless valves because they're kind of presto, you don't ever get any dirt in there anyway. I think it looks better without them and it's lighter by Nat's whisker. But if we're talking about suspension, talking about forks and shocks, then I always run them because I have forgotten to put them back on before and got mud jammed in there and it's let all the air out of my shock. So always run them there, never on here. Pressure washing your bike. You can get mountain bike specific washers that will have their power meters to make sure they're not crazy powerful. But even with a normal pressure washer, you can use them. Just don't go mad on the bearings. And if you're doing it often, make sure they're greased. Do you clean your bike after every dirty ride? Well, not every time. It depends how bad it is. Sometimes I'll just clean the chain off and lube it. Save getting everything wet and sometimes even dirtier. Well, rules are made to be broken, uh, but not all of them all the time. 
Let us know in the comments down below if there's anything that you do that you really shouldn't be doing. And give us a thumbs up if you like this video.